What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace the ball joints on your Fox Body Mustang. So it's a pretty simple process. You don't really got to take too much part and you get done in a couple hours. We're going to be demonstrating on my 1986 turbocharged Fox Body Mustang. First things first, you got to jack the car way off the ground because you have this ball joint separator and it needs to have enough clearance to be able to get on that ball joint and press it out. So let me show you what I'm talking about just so you know why we're gonna jack the car up like five feet off the ground. So this is the ball joint press. You can rent it at your local O'Reilly's or AutoZone. Very easy, I got mine from O'Reilly's, but it does stick out from the bottom pretty far with this giant screw thing and you're gonna need maximum clearance to get away from that. So you're gonna be needing this. Here is the move ball joint that we are going to be using. All right, let's get the car off the ground and get this all situated. Okay, so now that we have the wheel off, the car is jacked up, we have plenty of room to work. We're gonna take the cutter pin off of the tie rod end and take that off first. So take some set of needle nose pliers and pull this thing out. So once you get the cutter pin out, you're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket and get this thing loose. And then you're gonna take it about up to the top, spray a little penetrating oil in there. You're gonna hit it with a hammer until it comes loose. There it goes. See now it's loose. We can pull the castle nut off and slide the tie rod end right out. After the tie rod end, so we're not gonna take this assembly apart all the way. All we're gonna do is loosen up the rotor and pull it away enough just so the ball joint can drop through and we can replace it. So first thing we gotta do is take the cotter pin off and this retaining nut. So what you're gonna get is a clean shop towel so you can start putting all this greasy stuff into it so it doesn't get dirty. Take this off and then this nut shouldn't be very tight but you're gonna still need either some channel locks or something like it to pull it loose but channel locks work pretty good and you just loosen it up and pull it out and then we're going to take the outer bearing out as well and set it in our shop rag there we go goodness so our bearing and everything is in a safe clean shop rag and we're going to put it out of the way we want to make sure that we can turn this thing and move the rotor far enough out of the way so it doesn't hit this part of the control arm. Sometimes you can take a screwdriver and just pull the brake caliper out and it'll help pull this out so you're out of the way. Okay, so now that there's enough room between the control arm and the rotor so you're not gonna just destroy your rotor, um, you can see my boot is ripped up so who knows how much dirt and crap is in there. It's probably disgusting and destroyed and so that's a good reason why we're changing out these ball joints. Okay, so this castle nut back here needs to be removed and there's a cotter pin we gotta take out. So after you get the cotter pin, you're gonna get your 24 millimeter wrench. You can't get a socket on it, but you can get a wrench on it and you're gonna break it loose. And so once it's loose, you're going to loosen up that castle nut to the top of the ball joint bolt and leave it there. Because what we're going to do is hit the spindle with a hammer and use the spring to push the ball joint down and separate it from the spindle. And we're going to spray a little penetrating oil in here so it can break loose a little bit easier. And now we're going to take our hammer and smack on this spindle a couple times to hopefully break the ball joint loose. There it goes. And so now we're going to take our jack and put it underneath the control arm so the spring just doesn't shoot that control arm out when we take the end link off and take the ball joint all the way off. So now we can take the castle nut off the ball joint and now we're going to take the end link off just so we can lower the control arm down low enough to separate it from the spindle. And I have aftermarket um, in links so I had to take mine all the way off if you have stock in links you can just loosen it all the way to the top and you should be able to have enough room to get the ball joint free from the spindle but I had to take mine all the way off and so now we can drop the jack down and get the ball joint free from the spindle and my in link came all apart it all came apart right there so now what you can do is take a piece of tie wire and pull the shock out of the way because it's going to be in your way the whole time. So a piece of tie wire, tie it around something just to hold it out of your way while you're working on the ball joint makes your life a lot 
easier. And so now we're gonna pop off the old dust boot so we can have access to the ball joint and we can press it out. We're gonna get our ball joint press out and so we gotta get the medium cup is what works to go around the bottom of the ball joint and then the cap or the disc that works with it so it sits flush. And so all we're gonna do is that ball joint press, we're gonna put the top of it that doesn't have any threads in it over the top of the ball joint. And then in the bottom, we're gonna thread in our big bolt and thread it through and put the disc and the medium cup on the bottom so we can press the ball joint down and out of the control arm. And I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty annoying to try to get this thing to work in your favor. And so now that we got it together, all we're gonna do is crank on the bottom of this thing and make sure you got like a big old breaker bar or something because this thing is tight. It is hard to press out, but you can do it. You just take some, some muscle. <laughs> So now that we got it pressed out, we just take this assembly apart and we can get our old junk ball joint out of here. And as you can see, the ball joint is just destroyed. <laughs> There's no saving it. So that could have been part of my vibration problem I've been having so much. And so we can take this time to clean up this area where we're going to put the ball joint back. We can, I'd scrub mine with a wire brush and wiped it off with a towel just to make sure it was clean and it had a good surface to prep press into and you know just having a little bit cleaner is nice I had all this nasty grease and crap all over it so it was a good way to just clean things up and so here is our brand new Moog ball joint it is a really nice piece um, it's gonna work a lot better than <laughs> that old one that we had on the car all right so before we install the new Moog ball joint what we want to do is put the grease fitting into its hole so make sure you don't cross thread it because it's pretty easy so it's 9 16 so we got the grease fitting in now what we got to do is we got to find the right pieces to press this thing in so on this we're going to use this disc to press against the bottom of the ball joint because it has this big layer and it presses against this outer layer of the ball joint and so we can just shoot that right up in there and for the top we need the medium sized cup to go over it and then this cap this side you want up with a little knurled are the raised and so the actual U of the ball joint press goes over it so it actually presses in straight if you have this thing off a little bit it'll press in wrong and be crooked and then you're in a world you're just, just not fun not fun is the best way to put that hey siri play okay and so you'll know when the beer or the ball joint is seated because at the certain point you just won't be able to tighten it anymore no matter what you do and it is a bear trying to get this thing on here and tighten it up. you got to have like a 14 foot long breaker bar to press that in when you're done you check make sure this thing is seated all the way up into the to the outer lip and mine is good it is seated all the way it's on Holy moly. So one of the things you want to do is take a little screwdriver or something and turn this thing from front to back to the car so you can get that cotter pin in a little bit easier. Just like this. And that will make your life just a touch easier. So this boot is one of the hardest things to get on. And so what you got to do is you put the boot on and then we're going to put this through the spindle and once all the weight of the spindle and the shock is on there it's gonna push it on and then you'll take a screwdriver and you'll be able to actually push this all the way down okay so now the rest of this is just the opposite of what we did before we're gonna put this back through the spindle and then put our cotter pin in and tighten it all down and be done so let's get to it so now what you want to do is line up the ball joint with the spindle and just uh, jack it up on through. And then we'll put the spindle nut back on. And so once you thread the, the ball joint through, you wanna jack it all the way up until it's flat. All the way until it stops going into the spindle completely. And you see how flattened it is? Now is the time to take your wrench and press down the corners and get that ball joint boot to click over the ball joint. Now the boot is all the way on. Whew. 
we can tighten up our nut all the way. And so there is a torque spec for this, but you can't get a torque wrench on it with the shock on there. So you just get your 24 millimeter wrench and you tighten it down. You only can, you can't, you can't verify that. So you just gotta tighten it down. All right, so once you feel like you got it pretty tight, now you gotta line up the castle nut with one of the holes so you can actually thread in your cotter pin. We got our cotter pin in. So the first thing we wanna do is get our bearing back in. I always like to put a little bit of fresh grease in the bearing. More grease, the better. All right, we'll stick it right back in. And then stick the washer in. And then the nut, the way you're supposed to do that is tighten it until it stops and then take it one flat off. Be that, and then you take it one flat off. And that's supposed to be money, money. That's it. Oh, so now we can put our tie rod in back on. Basically the same principle. Get it through the tie rod in and get it up there. Tighten it down real tight. I think it's 54 foot pounds. No, oh, well, that's tighter than 54. There we go. Screw this guy. Bada bing, ba boom. So last thing we got to do is put the end link back on. Is that? is a little tricky sometimes, especially when you have aftermarket in-link like myself. Right now. All right, so we got our in-link torqued down to 20 foot-pounds, and the whole car is back together now. The last thing we gotta do before we say this ball joint is done is hit it with a grease gun. So a good rule of thumb, fill up the ball joint until the boot swells up. So let's get this on here. All right, we're all filled up. All right, so if you enjoyed this video and you found value in changing your ball joints, please leave a like, subscribe, and there's just gonna be more Fox Body Mustang content on the channel. We're gonna be going fast, we're gonna be repairing stuff, we're gonna be changing stuff, just all the Fox Body stuff you could ever want in a channel. That's me, so click subscribe. All right guys, I will catch you on the next one. Have a great day.